Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We are live right now. To God be the glory for great things he has done and greater things he will do. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen, and amen. I believe you can hear me loud and clear. Please let me know before we proceed. Uh, on Periscope, we are live, and also on Facebook, we are live. Greetings to each and every one of you in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The same Spirit that resurrected Jesus Christ from the dead. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We magnify your name. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. Glory, glory, glory to the Lamb of God. Glory to the one that seated upon the throne in heaven. You alone heard my desire and I long to worship you. You alone, you alone at my strength and my shield, oh, you alone make my spirit be. You alone at my Desire and I long to worship you. You alone at my hand. Desire and I long. To worship you, there is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I could search through all. Eternity, Lord, and find there is none like you. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know oh, he owns my future and life is worth a living just because he lives. I just want to say. Baba o Eshe I just want to say Baba o 
eshe we give you glory lord as we honor you we give you glory lord as we worship you you are wonderful you are worthy o lord 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 Father we thank you be exalted O Lord be magnified Lord Blessed be God of Israel who was and is and is to come. Your name is I than any other name. Your name is Jesus. Your name is Lord. Your name is I than any other name Your name is Jesus Your name is Lord Your name is I than any other name Your name is Jesus Your name is Lord Your name is I than any other name Your name is Jesus Your name is Lord O Lord I God how excellent is your name in all the how excellent is your name you are the pillar the old man love you are the pillar the old man love master jesus you are the pillar the old man Lie. Master Jesus, you are the pillar, the old man. Father, we thank you. We praise your holy name. Blessed be God of Israel that is that was that is and that is to come. We magnify your name because you are God all by yourself. You seated upon the throne in heaven and the earth is your footstool. We give you all the glory, all the honor and adoration. Be magnified, O Lord. Be exalted, O Lord. Magnify, Lord, be magnified. 
blessed assurance, Jesus, you are Lord. You died on the cross of Calvary that we may have life and have it abundantly. Sweet Jesus, we thank you for this day. It is not by any man's power or any man's ability. It is by your power, it is by your ability, it is by your capability. And so we are saying thank you. We rejoice before your throne saying thank you. Because of your word that are yea and amen. Because of the grace to see this day. Above all, because the death of your son has brought us life. Magnify, Lord, be magnified. Be magnified, be magnified. Be exalted, O Lord. We give you all the glory. Lord, we thank you because there is none like you. There is none only as our Lord. There is none like you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We want to welcome you in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You are all welcome on Facebook. You are welcome. Apostle Freline, my one and only Apostle, Jesus, uh, uh, on the face of the earth, we see Jesus with 12 Apostles. But I have only one Apostle, and that is Apostle Freline, the international senior Apostle of our time. Sister Judith, good to see you. Everyone that are there that I'm yet to see, good to see you on Periscope also. For everyone that are there and that will come later, good to see each and every one of you. Uh, we give God all the glory for the grace and the privilege of this day. It is not by power. It is not by might. It is by His Spirit. Uh, according to the calendar of this world, according to the timing of this world, today is the first Sunday of the Ember month, September, October, November, December. And um, the journey so far, we can only attribute it to God. Because looking at the Corobia and all that has happened, and that is still happening on the face of the earth that the world does not have an answer to. We say, Father, you alone, you are worthy. And above all, your kingdom reign supreme. Thy kingdom come and your will be done on the face of the earth. So for those of you that are there in the next 10 seconds, I'm going to give you uh, 10 seconds so that you can quickly share and invite somebody. Just one person, if you want to do so right away, before we go into the Word of God. We are going into the book of Luke. We are going into the book of Luke. One of the things that Jesus said on the face of the earth was, he says, we don't know the scripture and we don't know the power of God. So if we don't know the script, it is impossible for us to also know the power of God. We may see the act of God, but if we know the script, if we know the scripture, if we know the word, we will know the power, we will know the act, we will know the deed, we will know the ways. You see, we're going to have the full knowledge of God. But a lot of us today seek for the act, the miracle, the signs, the wonders. That's all that matters to us. And it's as a result that we don't know the scripture. Jesus saw the multitude coming and he said to the disciples, they are only here because of the bread. And he asked the disciples that we are moving over somewhere else. It's amazing that he moved. He wasn't saying, yeah, because the crowd are here, let's feed them with the bread. He made it known that you are only here. You are here right now because of the bread. So you are not here because of the word of life. And when you, if you have been following us, you will see that the, the same word of Jesus says, life is more than food, it's more than drink, it's more than clothing. 
And we've come to the conclusion that there is a divine assignment. There is a divine purpose for each and every one of us. If you are a child of God, you have a divine assignment. You have a divine purpose. You are here for a reason. You are on the face of the earth for a reason. And unless you go into the script of the Most High, it is impossible. It will be difficult to discover the purpose which God has established you on the face of the earth. So, why am I going through all of this? These are some of the recap of the word of God that we have looked into. For example, few, I think last week we were looking at how God order his, his own f- stuff and he does not live by our uh, uh, our emotion or whatever. That's not God. And also today we're going to look at the book of Luke. We're going to look at the book of Luke. We want to look at two sets of people today in the gospel. One in the book of Luke, one in the book of John. The two sets of people, you're going to see how they are described. And you come to the conclusion, which one do you want to be? Because there is no such thing as, oh, God of immediate is going to do it now. There is no such thing as God of breakthrough 24 hours. There is no such thing. Oh, uh, I, 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 I say to you right now, in the next seven days, it's going to come to pass. Look, God can, can give you the ability to prophesy and see what is to come in the next seven days. And the thing we need to know is, God does not live according to our timing. God does not live according to our timing. God does not do anything according to man's timing. His ways, according to the scripture, he says, my ways is not your ways. In other words, his ways is extremely different from our own way. I'm giving you all of these so that you will see the God that has not been presented to you. If the ways of God is our way, God will not anoint David at the age, at his teenager, and then make him to wander in the wilderness for another 13 to 14 years before sitting on the throne. He made him to begin to fight battles, though he was giving him the victory, but he began to fight here and there. He did not have rest. Even sitting on the throne, he kept fighting battles. He wasn't resting. If the ways of God is our way, God will not call Abraham. And Abraham will wait for so many years before having a child. Meanwhile, God made a promise to him that his children will inherit the land. Because the first, one of the first things God said to Abraham was, I'm taking you to a land and then your children and your children's children will inherit the land. Through you, uh, all the whole earth will be blessed. But yet the man doesn't even have a child. And we see God coming at a time when Abraham confirmed that he's old and then he, his wife is also old. In other words, according to man's timing, man Expect that when you get to a certain age, it is difficult to have a child as a man and as a woman. According to man's timing, according to the way man sees stuff, the way we see things. And that's why in the world, we are the one that use calendar. We are the one that use uh, uh, time. What time is it? Oh, it is two o'clock. I've got to do this. What time is it? It is five o'clock. This is what I need to do. Oh, what time is it? It is six o'clock. I have to close work and go home. But in the case of God, that is not how God is. And we're going to see. Let's go to the book of Let's quickly go to the book of uh, uh, Luke. Let's go to the book of Luke. Sister Kate, I see you there. My senior pastor, Angie, good to see you. Let's go to the book of, um, 
Let's go to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 1, the beginning of the book of Luke. From the beginning, chapter 1, I'm going to start reading from verse 5. When Herod was king of Judea, there was a Jewish priest. Now, let's look at two contradicting set of people that were also dwelling in the land at the same time. Herod, a notorious king, a man then lived in the period of Herod as the priest of the land, but he was not notorious. And this is one of the things we need to start seeing, that the way God is, is different from our thinking. Oh, there is a witch in the land. That is the reason why that land is not prospering. Mba. Tell me, who is the power that can subdue God on the face of the earth? Go back to the book of Psalm, Psalm 24. The earth is of the Lord, and what? And the fullness thereof. Let's read that again. The earth is of the Lord. So a witch may stay in the land. The land still belongs to who? Of the Lord. God decides when the land is fruitful and the land is not fruitful. But there are some things that can make the land to be barren. Please, let's get this straight. For example, we see shedding of blood as something that God hates with a passion. When we keep shedding blood on the face of the earth for no reason, innocent blood, that can cause our land to be barren. That can cause so many things to go wrong on the face of the earth. The reason is, God says, the life of man is in the blood. You see, I'm digressing. But let's go back. Herod was the king of Judea. There was a Jewish priest named Zechariah. He was a member of the priestly order of Abijah. I know that's not how it is called, but I just like the way it sounds, so pardon me. And his wife, Elizabeth, was also from the priestly line of Aaron. So there are two sets of priests. One from the beginning, Aaron, the first priest that was ordained in the land, Abijah also come along the way in one of the priests in the Old Testament. If you study the Old Testament, you will see this Abijah there. So, where am I going? The wife and the husband were coming from the lineage of the priest. So, their lineage has not been desecrated. Their lineage is intact. God's order is in the lineage because there are some things that God has commanded the priests of the land and they kept to it. And some of them that deliberately go wayward, like the Bible says one of these priests, I've forgotten the name now, offer a strange fire. The Lord just strike the guy. Au revoir, hasta la vista, comment tapetu. So God deals with them. There was a priest in the land. God says by the name Eli. He said, because of what you have done, no man will grow old in your lineage anymore. We see God dealing with them. Their, their uh, punishment seems to be severe because God is putting them in a position that you should know better. So we see Elizabeth, Elizabeth, or how is it pronounced? E or A? Elizabeth. Elizabeth. So we see one Elizabeth here. We see one Zachariah married. Now look at the uh, 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 beauty of Elizabeth and Zachariah. Verse 6. Zachariah and Elizabeth were righteous in God's eyes. Let's pause on that. I said we were going to look at two sets of people. This is why I want you to get out of, oh, God of immediate, God of 24 hours, God of breakthrough. Please, I'm not saying God doesn't have the power to overturn, to overrule within 24 hours. 
But you need to know this God that, yes, the same way he can turn things around like that, the same way he can wait for another hundred years before turning it around. And this is the God that most times they don't show us. And I've come to show you that God, this man, these honorable men were righteous in the eyes of God, carefully to obey all the Lord's command. So if you were looking at the lineage of the priest, they have excelled. For example, when we go to the lineage of Eli, we see the fault of Eli. Now, coming back to the lineage of Zechariah as the priest, we did not see any fault in Zechariah. Maybe there was a fault in the lineage of Zechariah many, 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 many years ago. Zechariah corrected that fault to the glory of God the Father. Now, in the lineage of Elizabeth, we have seen some fault because the Bible says it comes from the lineage of Aaron, the first priest of Israel. So Aaron and the children have done some things that God says, no, this is not how you're supposed to do it. And God gave them the punishment that comes with it. Now, Elizabeth, the Bible says, were righteous in the eyes of God, carefully to obey all of the Lord's commandment and regulation. In other words, they were walking before the Most High and there was no blemish. They were walking straight in the route that God has established them to walk in. And they have not allowed distraction to become their focus. But today, many of us as children of God has allowed distraction to become our focus. Look, distraction is in this world. Jesus experienced distraction. And that's why the Bible says, he that endure to the end. He didn't say he that enjoy. Many times when we enjoy, we don't want it to come to an end. But many times when we endure, we quickly want it to be over in the next 10 seconds. But the Bible says, he that endure to the end. He that endure to the end. Go to the book of 2 Timothy. He says, thou therefore my son. I'm reading 2 Timothy from the book of, uh, uh, from chapter 2. Thou therefore my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. These are the things they don't tell us that as a child of God, we've got to be strong. Yes, there is grace, but we still are called to be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. He says, Thou endure hardness. You see another form of endurance. Endure hardness. These are the things they don't show us. Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Endure hardness. Endure. Endure. So I've come to challenge and to let you know that endurance is part of the process. Endurance is part of the route. Endurance is part of the calling. Endurance is part of the way and all the way. That's that's why in the book of Timothy it says, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus said, he that endure to the end. Are you with me or you have gone home? Look at the life of Zachariah and Elizabeth. They were righteous in the eyes of God, careful to obey all of the Lord's command and regulation. How many of us can raise our hand that we have this qualification? Let me, let me know in the next 10 seconds. Let me know. I'm going to wait for 10 seconds. How many of us can raise our hand in the next 10 seconds that we can raise our hand and say, yes, I qualify with all of this. And don't forget, this is not after the death of Christ Jesus. This was before the birth. Of Christ Jesus. So I'm not talking that, oh, I'm redeemed by the blood. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. I am a redeemer. The blood is speaking over my life. The blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary. Oh, the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus. Oh, thank God for the blood. I have nothing against the blood. 
In fact, thank God so much for the blood because if there is no shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. But before we see the blood now, see the lifestyle of Zachariah and the wife. See their lifestyle. They were righteous before the Lord. They also live a careful life to obey the Lord's commandments and regulations. Not one commandment, not two. We don't know how many of the commandments and regulation as a priest. So they kept themselves in the line of duty, obeying the Lord, or walking according to the regulation, not going out of the regulation, in the line of duty. Now look at what follow. After all of this, Verse 7 says, they had no children because Elizabeth was unable to conceive and they were both very old. Now, the word very is the word that I want you to hold on to. Regardless of their righteous living, regardless of their way of life in the presence of the Most High, regardless of fulfilling God's command and the regulation and living by it, they had no children. Now, let's go back. Let's rewind. Let's press the rewind button. Don't forget, in the book of Psalm, we were able to see that the Bible says children are the heritage of the Lord. So these men, are they not qualified to have children? Zachariah and, and, and uh, Elizabeth, are they not qualified? Are they not walking in the right uh, direction in the presence of the Most High? If they were to have children according to the to the recommendation that we see here. Don't you think they were going to raise that children in the ways of the Lord too? Don't you think? Or you think those children are going to be wayward? I think they will raise that children too to fulfill the commandment of the Lord and God's regulation. I believe. Please, I may be wrong because we've seen uh, uh, somebody like Eli. Even the Bible talks about the the elders of the nation of Israel said to Samuel, your children aren't walking in your footstep. So choose for us a king. So it might go either way, but let's just believe and say that with the recommendation, with the uh, uh, word that was used to describe them, they will raise that children or they will raise those children in the ways of the Lord, but yet they don't have one. And the Bible says they were very old. And that is to tell you that God does not walk according to your timing. God does not walk according to my timing. Oh, I'm 36. God doesn't know that you are 36. Oh, I am 75. It does not bother God that you are 75. What he says he will do, if he wanted to do it at 75, so be it. And this is why I am begging you to get out of half-baked gospel. Half-baked gospel. And look in word of this word that God does not walk according to man's timing. God does not do stuff according to man's timing. God does not move according to man's timing. He doesn't. Let me give you an example. In the book of Exodus, in the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter, well, I don't remember chapter, but they were to cross the Red Sea. All you Bible scholars will know. They were to cross the Red Sea. Pharaoh was coming behind. And the Bible says the children of Israel began to cry unto Moses. Moses, you have brought us here to kill us. We were better off in Egypt. And the Bible says, God said to Moses, lift up the rod. And he divided the Red Sea all through the night. Why didn't he just do it just like that? Let's say they have about, let's say they were at the Red Sea by uh, 7 p.m. 
and God divided the Red Sea all through the night. So they had to wait for another 7 a.m. in the morning. If my calculation is right, I'm just using this as an analogy. But that's what the Bible says, that the Red Sea was divided all through the night. It did not do it just like that, just instant, instantly, instantly, instantly. That's not what he did. But you will see that while he's separating the Red Sea with the east wind, the Bible says he makes sure that something hindered the Egyptians and they could not get to the children of God. Go back into the scripture. My ways are not your ways. We need to get this into our system, into every being of us, let our blood be flowing with it that God does not walk according to man's timing. God does not move according to man's timing. Don't be a Christian that they will tell you, you've got to shout so that God can hear you. Because he doesn't move according to your timing. He doesn't move according to my timing. That is not how God operates. Let's go back to the book of Luke quickly. Let's go back. Zachariah and Elizabeth were described here that they were very old. What do you know? Or what is the interpretation of very old? In other words, as the calculation and timing of man, it is impossible for them to have children. Let me say this again. God does not move according to man's timing. God does not operate according to man's timing. If any preacher has come to you and said, Ah, by these seven days, look, he is not God. If any preacher has come to you, if you sow that seed, you will have that breakthrough within 24 hours. The preacher is only there to collect your money. He is not God because God does not move according to man's timing. If Zachariah and Elizabeth will be righteous, they were both righteous. In the eyes of God, the Bible testify. The word of God testify. Men on the face of the earth also testify because because according to Luke, the doctor that was writing this, this is the testimony of Luke according to the testimony of God. He had to put it down. So he says they had no children because Elizabeth was unable to conceive and they were both very old. What does that mean, both very old? So for the man, it is au revoir, hasta la vista, comment petu. For the woman, it is au revoir, hasta la vista, comment petu. But yet there is something in the life of Zachariah and Elizabeth, the faithfulness to serve, to be in the line of duty, they did not lose that. So, their mission is, I did not come into the presence of God because he's going to give me a child. I did not come into the presence of God because he's going to bless me. I did not come into the presence of God because, yes, once I receive Christ as my Lord and Savior, oh, every battle I will win and then I will live 150 years and I will be on top. These are the lies that has been presented to us. Come to Christ, all your problem will be solved. It is the opposite. Let's go further. Uh, I will not be able to go into the other uh, family today in the book of John. We will just stop here in the book of Luke. And next week, by the grace of God, we go to the book of John. One day, Zechariah was serving God. So in the midst of the barrenness. Now, let's go back as man. Because of their timing, that they are now very old. You and I don't know what they have gone through 
in terms of looking for a child, praying for a child, seeking the face of God for a child. But according to the Bible, it says one day Zachariah was serving God. So that is to say that in the period of them waiting eagerly that they will have children, they continue to serve in the line of duty. Which duty? Elohim's duty. They were faithful in the line of duty. Many of us, when we come to Christ and yet one thing or the other that we supposed to have seen and expect to have happened, and that did not happen, we're in a setting. And to serve will be difficult. Zachariah continued to serve in the temple in the presence of the Most High. All that is required as Zachariah, he continued to do in the line of duty. Barrenness did not deter what Zachariah will do in the line of duty. Maybe they've labeled him, they've shamed him, they've Call him all sort of name. That did not weigh him down. That did not become weariness in his heart. He continued to serve in the presence of God, in the line of the duty that he has been called into. And that is why I've come to shout into your ears that God does not move by any man's timing. God does not move by your timing. God does not move by my timing. God waited 400 years for some nation to turn their life around and they choose not to do so. They sacrifice their children on altar. They engage in all sorts of immoralities. And when God now said, I'm going to wipe them away, people of the world began to say all sorts. Who am I? The owner of the land says, I'm wiping this set of people away because of the atrocity and the shedding of innocent blood. And I'm going to put a new set of people there that I will be their God and they will be my people. And yet we say God is too tough. But he waited 400 years. God does not move by any man's timing. God does not move by your timing. And my timing. We are the one that lives in time. God lives in eternity. And the Bible made it known that a thousand years is like a night, and a night is like a thousand years. In other words, it doesn't bother me. Whether it is a thousand years, so be it. Whether it is a night, so be it. I am not bound by your time. God is not bound by any man's timing. Elizabeth and Zachariah were very old. Let's put a number to it. Let's say they were in their uh, 70, late 70s, 78 and 70, uh, let's say 78. Let's say 80. Let's say 70. They were very old. So according to the word very old, the timing of having children has passed. But see what the Bible says. One day Zechariah was serving. I'm reading verse 8 again. In serving in God's temple for his order was on duty that week as was the custom of the priest. He was chosen by law to enter into the sanctuary of the Lord and burn incense. While the incense was being burned, a great crowd stood outside praying. See, if Zachariah has gone in there with a filthy mind, that's au revoir, hasta la vista, comment tapetu. It's not going to come out. Don't forget it deals with the heart. So it's not going to come out. Yeah, the crowd may be praying outside. Zachariah is not going to be, it's not going to come out. Verse 11, while Zechariah was in the sanctuary, an angel of the Lord appeared to him. Why do we not have preachers tell us that it is in the line of duty we also can encounter the presence of the Lord? Why must they come and say it is 24 hours? Is this not the same Bible? How many times do you see that 24-hour miracle? By this time tomorrow, there shall be plenty. But they've been in farming for how many years? I've come to open your eyes that God is not bound by any man's timing. 
So while Zachariah was busy in the line of duty, doing the work of the Most High, like Jesus said, I must walk while it is day. He says, for the night come that no man will be able to walk. And it's not just talking, uh, let me go to work and let me earn my salary and let me come back. He's talking about doing the work of the Father. And we see, we see Zachariah being faithful in doing the work of his father, regardless of the bot that is in the lives of, of Zachariah. If I was to have a bot in my life, will I still stand upright? If I was to have a bot in my home, will I still stand upright? Ask yourself that same question. If there is a known bot that the whole world can recognize in your life, are you still going to be in the presence of the Lord? And are you still going to serve him with all of your heart? God does not walk by any man's timing. God does not walk. These are not the message we hear daily. This is coming to a lot of us right now as, what is this man saying? And I can sense that there is quietness because this is not what we have been shown. Oh, I've been a believer for 50 years. Yes, thank God, Zachariah was old. The wife was old. And we see God did not come through at the peak of their lives so that people can rejoice as, ah, you waited 10 years, you waited 15 years, you waited, we don't know what age they got married. Let's say they got married at the age of 20. Let's say, let's just say, and now at the age of 20, the man is now 75. That's how many years? We are talking about another 55 years. He waited 55 years and yet in the midst of waiting, he served God continually because it was recorded for him that he kept the regulations and the commandment of the Lord. And the waiting that I don't have a child did not determine the life of Zachariah. Nor Elizabeth. To the point that when, when she got pregnant, the Bible says she was in hiding because it's like something that she's meant to be proud of that uh, I got married and two years, I uh, know, no, two years is a lot. I had a testimony one time. Ah, you will laugh at this. Oh, I got married and then we waited. We were waiting and we were waiting and eventually said, after two years, God now answer us. So, in other words, immediately you get married, you are expecting to do what? To conceive a nine months after and give back. That is man's timing. That is not God's timing. Please, I know there are times that there are some yoke. When we come to Christ, the yoke needs to be broken by the power that is in the blood of Jesus. Don't get me wrong. That I believe that the minute we enter the domain of Christ, there are some yoke that needs to be broken completely by the power that is in the blood of Jesus. And then we can start the journey afresh with Christ Jesus. So when this woman now say, praise thy Lord, the old church was a bit silent that you waited two years. And you are saying, what? It's like, what kind of testimony is this? Now, this is a man that waited. Let's say, I'm just saying, please, don't get me wrong. This is a man that waited for another 55 years to the point that the wife had to go into hiding that this thing that makes to be joyful, that makes, to, that, that makes me uh, feel like a woman, that eventually I feel the baby moving in me. I'm a woman. and. This is it. I, I, I feel good about this. She was in hiding. What does that say to you? 
But let a woman of about 30 years uh, marry today and maybe about two years after she's pregnant, you will not see that woman of 32 or 33 or 34, even 40, hiding pregnancy as long as it is, you know, there are some things that can make a woman to hide pregnancy. But let's say with all things being equal, a woman that got married will also want to display that come and see the goodness of the Lord in my life. Zachariah was faithful. And I beg of you now, look inward of you. And on the face of the earth as individual, we are all waiting for something. So peradventure, you are to wait for another 50 years. Will you still continue to serve faithfully? Will you still continue to keep the regulations and the command of the Lord? People of God, I am an advocate that we need to get out of illegitimate gospel. And I want us to get into the original gospel. Let's start this journey afresh. Let's begin to run. When I was in primary and secondary school, one of my favorite things to do is to run. And then for both my secondary school and my primary school, I will speak to represent the school in running. We do 400 meters, we do 200 meters, we do 800 meters, we do relay. And in all of these race, there are specific uh, rules that comes with it that you have to obey. For example, if you are doing relay, you get the button with your left hand and you pass it to your right hand and you begin to run. And you must not drop it until you pass the button to your fellow, uh, to your mate. If you drop the button along the way, or while you are exchanging the button, it drops, that's au revoir, hasta la vista common tapetu. Today, many are being disqualified in the journey of Christianity, but because you still see crowd going to them, you don't know that they've already dropped the button and they are disqualified. When disqualification happens, the crowd still gather at the stadium. They don't leave. But disqualification has already happened. But in the journey, you may fall. I remember we were running one day with another uh, about six or seven schools. And one of our mates that, that we were running with fell. And the guy fell so terrible that to get up we the rest of the mate that were representing our schools kept shouting get up get up and run get up and run and under normal circumstances this guy can speed we now began to encourage Tony get up Tony get up Tony run Tony run and the guy get got up and began to speed probably if the falling did not happen it would have come first and with the falling, he managed to secure the third position. See, falling down is not disqualification. But when you cross lane, you will be disqualified. Many have crossed lane because of the gospel that they are presenting. Many have crossed lane because the gospel they are holding is not the legitimate gospel. Like Paul said, if anyone has come to present another gospel to you, let him be caused. So that is the disqualification because they present another gospel they are already cause. And I want to beg you that God does not move by the timing of man. That is the message I've come to present to you today. That Zachariah, Elizabeth, they were righteous in the presence of the Lord. They careful to obey the Lord's commandments and regulation, but they had no children. At their peak, at the young age, when they got married, they do uh, obedience to God, the regulations to God, they had no children. 
children until they were very old. But there is one thing that was unique about them. They kept serving the Most High. And in the line of duty, we see God dispatching an angel. I want to stop here. We will continue this next week by the grace of God. I want you to look in word of you right now. Look in word. Oh, my son needs to be healed now. Well, if God wants to heal him now, praise God. But if God did not want to heal him now, he wants to do it gradually along the way for his name to be glorified. Praise God. Who am I? The fact that the power and the ability is not in me to do it, I've got to rely on the one that can do it. When you look into your scripture, there are not many men that has got the recommendation of Zachariah and Elizabeth. Not many. But yet, they were barren. From their youth age when they got married to very old. Barrenness. God did not say, ah, let me quickly leave the barrenness after they've waited 10 years. No. Don't forget he's God. Many things are going to make sense to us when we get to heaven. Many puzzles are going to be revealed when we get to heaven. I want to challenge you. Heaven is real. Heaven is the ultimate. Let's keep walking in the route that God has put us. Let's keep serving faithfully because he sees our heart. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to call it a day today. Uh, thank you for being a partaker. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. This is Pray the Word. Ministry is a prayer center in the heart of the community, a place where we pray the heart of the Father. I want to invite you again by 7 p.m. today. We're going to be having another meeting, and we will be having a guest speaker at that meeting by the grace of God. Uh, I want you to come 7 p.m. You know, this is not the norm that we do. But nevertheless, God is also a God that break, uh, he, he also break the box at times. And he just do things randomly. And we wonder. So 7 p.m., I'm asking each and every one of you to return back to this same platform. Let's enjoy the word of God together by the grace of God. Till I come your way next, which is 7 p.m., the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you, cause his face to shine upon you.